Master Chef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. I want this a lot. I'm going to put everything into it. From the moment I wake up, I start thinking about food. This is one tough competition. If I won Master Chef, I think I'd run out screaming. <laughs> Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These six contestants all dream of becoming a top chef. But only one will make it through to the quarter-final. We will know pretty much straight away if we have got a seriously talented cook in here by the way they handle the knife, by the way they handle the produce. Six people who want to change their lives, show us some determination. Show us you really want it. We want one decent plate of food in 50 minutes. At the end of this round, three of you will be going home. Best of luck. Let's cook. The contestants have to invent a dish and cook it from any of today's ingredients, which include king prawns, pancetta, long grain rice, new potatoes, celeriac, tinned plum tomatoes, maple syrup, red wine, and tinned chickpeas. 42-year-old Tracy likes to recreate restaurant-quality dishes at home for her family. My husband, he says he loves my food and he gives me scores out of 10, which... <laughs> when I cook new dishes, which is really useful. And generally, I get 9 out of 10. Tracy? What makes you think that you can make it all the way through? I think I've got a lot of good experience and I push myself all the time to learn new methods and use new ingredients. I love cooking, I'm completely passionate about it. Globetrotter Ashley's food has been inspired by his travels. Ash, what's your style of cooking? I lived in Singapore for three years, uh, so that was a good education. Uh, cook a lot of uh, Thai. Malay, uh, Indian, uh, also I love Italian. You might be a bit of a cook, Ashley. Might be, we'll see. I've, I've been working on, uh, on learning the basics and, and, and getting those right, so I'm confident that uh, whatever you throw at me, it should be OK. Surveyor Toby hopes today will take him one step closer to his dream of owning a restaurant. To win this competition would mean everything to me. Cooking is what I'm passionate about. Just creating, creating in the kitchen. Usually havoc. Cut your thumb. Yeah. Do you want me to have a look at it? Because it looks like it might not be very good. Come on, here's your do for me. Just hold that above your heart. That's the first thing, give me that please. You all right? Yeah, yeah, fine. Don't mind, bud. No. Okay. No, it's not, it's not good. We might have to put you into casualty, mate, by the looks of that. I feel really cheesed off. Just rushing and, uh, yeah, to the end of my thumb off. So, uh, extremely gutted. You've only got five minutes left. Back in the MasterChef kitchen, 24-year-old salesman Steve believes he has the right strategy to get through the first round. I think you've just got to take a backward step, look at what's in front of you and come up with something unique that no-one else is going to think of. And it's got to taste great. Steve, what is that dish going to be? I'm going to make a, like a potato and chickpea salad with a pancetta topping with a spicy tomato side. You have a, a secret. What's that? That you're on MasterChef but you don't eat meat. How do you know that that combination of tomatoes, bacon and potato and chickpeas are going to go together? But obviously not being able to taste it myself is a challenge that I have to try and overcome. Office temp Angela is out to impress with her experimental approach to cooking. I love using like different flavours and just seeing what I come out with really. I don't like doing boring, ordinary stuff. I like just to go out there on a whim and just take a risk. Angela, 
Yes. Have you decided what you're going to cook for us? Yeah, I think I'm doing sort of like a Italian chickpea and prawn sort of stew. Tomatoes, sort of lemon zest, a bit of olive oil, maybe some balsamic vinegar as well. Is there anything you were thinking of not putting in there? <laughs> How good a cook are you, Angela, right now? I think I've still got room to learn, but, I'll, you know, I'll give it all my all. Interior designer Anne wants to prove that her artistic flair isn't limited to home makeovers. What do you think makes you different from the other ones and the other people in the room? I find myself very creative. Um, it's my lifestyle, I am very creative, and that's why I like being in the kitchen, because it's my own little world. Let's throw some ingredients together and come up with some really different dishes. I'll put myself up for this challenge, so I think I'm going to have to try and excel myself. You've only got two minutes left. Put on your plates, please. That's it. Time's up. Vegetarian Steve is banking on his chickpea, pancetta and potato salad with a red wine and tomato sauce to get him through to the next round. I really don't know what to say because it defies the word salad. It's got three dry ingredients on it, on a sauce which looks similar to that of um, what happens when a cat's run over by a car. Your potatoes are overcooked and soggy, and your sauce tastes of raw red wine. All you've demonstrated is that you can slice and boil a potato and open up a tin of chickpeas, which is never going to be enough. It's not right, Steve. You, you must look down at that and realise that's not oh, right. I'm not happy with it. When I saw the things, it was blank to me. Fine dining cook Tracy aims to impress with garlic prawns on crushed chickpeas and a tomato sauce. I love the pulpy texture of those crushed chickpeas. And the prawns are nicely cooked and they're sweet. It's a bit mushy baby foody. The flavours actually are quite good. The prawns are, are lovely and tasty. You know, good. OK. Fusion cook Ashley hopes his pan-fried prawns with beurre blanc sauce and potato with tomato sauce will prove the perfect combination. Those potatoes aren't cooked. That beurre blanc doesn't work on sharp and spicy. Two together is very, very difficult to palate. Mm. I think the beurre blanc's been made very, very well. Classical processes you're doing are brilliant. It's just making sure those basics, like how to cook a spud, yeah. you know, don't forget those. Yeah. I can cook potatoes, of course, and uh, hopefully if I get through to the uh, next round, then I can show you. Interior designer Anne's latest creation is pan-fried prawns in soy sauce on potato and garlic mash. Your prawns are over-seasoned. They're very, very, very salty. I wouldn't send it back, but I'd probably ask for the service charge to be removed. Fair juice. Things on there are cooked nicely. Soy is what the Japanese use instead of salt. Um, so we have salt on salt with salty bacon. Trying to bring out the flavours in each, each of the different ingredients. Experimental cook Angela hopes her risky approach to cooking will have paid off with a prawn and chickpea stew. Some of the flavours, the deep richness of the tomato is really nice, there's lots of seasoning in there, and then I get whacked with a whole lot of honey. Don't add bits unnecessarily. You may be a culinary genius, but to me and John, you look like you threw everything in a pot and stirred it. There are some nice flavours. I'm so not convinced that you are a cook, actually. Let's give me another chance to find out. It was an interesting day, and I don't know how easy the decision's going to be. Thank you very much indeed. I've got to say, I feel sorry for Toby. The guy started off cutting up a piece of celery act and ended up taking the top of his thumb off. He had to go off to hospital, but he's fine. So we've got five left. Let's face it, this wasn't the strongest of the rounds today. There was lots of mistakes out there. I think what Steve did today was, was unbelievable. How does he honestly think opening a tin of chickpeas, slicing potatoes and boiling them is going to be enough to get him through to the next round? I can tell you now, Steve is the worst cook we've ever, ever had on MasterChef.
I don't think I would have eaten it myself. So, um, you know, it's fair enough. Steve's gone. If anyone has got potential, it's Ashley. The fact that Ashley knows how to make a beurre blanc puts him head and shoulders above the rest of the crowd. Is he a one-trick pony, though? It doesn't matter. I mean, quite frankly, if you can open a tin right now, you're through to the next round. But he's going to be able to cook a spud. He's got to get the basics right. OK, let's put him through. Tracy's dish was a little bit sloppy, but it was perfectly edible. Yeah, well-cooked prawns on top of crushed chickpeas, a rich tomato sauce. Tracy loves food. Let's give her the opportunity to get into a professional kitchen and see how she performs. So we've got now to choose between Angela and Anne. Anne's food was just not good. Soy sauce, tomatoes, bacon, the whole thing was so salty. I've just got to ease up on the seasoning next time round. I think I'm very conscious of under-seasoning, but uh, under the circumstances, went a little bit too far. And that uh, makes those mistakes whilst cooking. Angela simply doesn't cook chickpea, tomato, prawn, rice. It was never, ever going to be right. And honey. And it was only luck that she managed to come up with something edible. The flavours of Angela's food were all right, even though she put lots of stuff in. I just hope that they like it enough that they put me through, because I've still got so much to learn. I'm only 22, and I think I've done well. Andrew is definitely the novice. Anne is an experienced cook, but her ideas are not quite right. And it really is the question of, do you want to re-educate somebody, Anne, or do you want to educate somebody, Angela, being the novice? So there are five of you. That means three are staying and two are going home. Steve, you guessed it, you're going home. Yes. Tracy, Ashley, you guys cooking tomorrow. Well done. That means we've only got one place left. Angela or Anne? Angela, you're staying. Sorry, Anne, you're leaving us. Thank you very much. I'm so excited that I've gotten through to the second round. I thought I was going to go for a minute and then he said he'll stay in somewhere. Go on. I'm glad that I'm going to have a chance to cook a potato properly. <laughs> I'm really excited about working in a pro kitchen and see how it all works. I'm really excited about tomorrow. Tough round today, but tomorrow we send them to a professional kitchen. Their first taster, the real world of cookery. They are going to have to put up with the heat, the pace and the precision of customers paying for great food. They have got the chance to shine tomorrow. It's day two, and the contestants arrive at the Mango Tree, a restaurant serving Thai cuisine in the exclusive Belgravia area of London. Our three amateur cooks will be working under the watchful eye of executive chef Mark Reed. A couple of things that I expect from you today is quality and your attention at all times. OK, so let's get going. It's 12.30 and the first customers arrive for lunch. OK, new order. One scallops, one noodle salad, one pad thai gai. Ashley is making pad thai gai, stir-fried noodles with chicken in a spicy sauce. And as a fan of Asian cuisine, he's ready to go. Unfortunately, chef isn't. Not make the pad thai gai yet. Not make the pad thai gai. No. Away, main course, pad thai gai and the sea bass on the main. Finally, he gets to fire up his wok, but with a bit too much enthusiasm. Pad thai gai. OK, Ashley, tell me, tell me what you can smell. It's burnt, burnt huh? garlic. Burnt garlic. It's scorched, you yeah. can smell it, yeah? Yeah. Take it away. Remain focused, don't get complacent on me, OK? Yes, chef. I cook with a wok at home, but I <laughs> quite like this. It's a lot hotter. <laughs> OK, new order. One lamb rack. Rare. Yes, chef. 22-year-old Angela is cooking grilled lamb with sautéed mushrooms, but is struggling to get to grips with her new surroundings. Sorry, where do I put the dirty pans? Where's the lamb? How are we doing there, Angela? Yeah, doing well. OK, next table away. Main course, yes, table chef. one, please. Medium well. Angela's presentation isn't up to chef's high standards. Angela. Yes, chef. What have you done? Put it the wrong way round. Sorry, chef. Change them round for me, yes, please. Yes, chef. 
Tracy's main course is a sea bass fillet which is baked in the oven, then wrapped in a banana leaf for a final grilling. Its success relies on precise timing. One sea bass, chef. Tracy, keep an eye on your sea bass for me, please. It's just borderline between just cooked and just slightly undercooked. Okay, okay. Yes, chef. We've got everything under control at the moment, so as long as we don't suddenly get hit with an order for 10 sea bass or anything, it's fine. I mean, there's still a lot to do, so it's going to hit in a minute, and then we'll really see what they're made of. Right on cue, the lunchtime service picks up and the orders come in thick and fast. You order! You've got a sea bass on the main and another sea bass. Hey, you're selling a few sea bass. He called another sea bass to go, hasn't he? There's this one up there. Waiting for sea bass and a lamb rack. Oh, With six dishes to juggle, Tracy is finding it hard to keep up. Ow! Tracy, how many sea bass have you got on order, please? I've got two that are going to be ready in three minutes. I've got two more just about to put in for ten minutes. Six. Thank you. One sea bass. Sea bass, very tidy. Thank you very much. It's quite difficult to keep a track of all the different orders. I want one mixed up, please. Ashley's also overwhelmed by orders and is trying to make up for his earlier mishap. Ashley, how long for one pad take guy? Just coming now, chef. What's just coming? How long? Uh, one minute. Among the waiting customers is multi-award winning singer Gabrielle. Where is my Pad Thai guy, please, chef? One minute, chef. Your minutes are getting longer. Chef, Pad Thai guy. How is it? It's good, chef. Much better. Thank you, chef. So much nicer when you do it properly. Yes. I'm actually on my second serving <laughs> of Pad Thai. Fantastic. Um, what can I say? Cheers. Back in the kitchen, Angela is making herself at home after a shaky start. Okay, what are you giving me first, Angela? Uh, medium, chef. Thank you. And she's turning out perfectly cooked lamb. Medium, chef. Yeah, that was the final dish. Lovely and clean. Thank you, chef. Well done. It's the end of service. So how does executive chef Mark think our three amateurs have coped? Uh, first of all, there was Ashley. He had a little mishap where he slightly overcooked one. So, obviously, he lost his concentration. But he picked it back up at the end. I was just sort of in the zone, really, so I was just trying to get them out because they were piling up. And then we had Tracy's dish. Her little hiccup was uh, one of the dishes. It was just slightly undercooked. But, again, she picked herself up. She was very clean, very methodical. I think once the order started coming in, you sort of get into the flow of it. And then it was just a real buzz. Angela, the only problem with her dish was in the presentation. On the plus front, she cooked it all perfectly. My presentation definitely needs a bit of work, but hopefully I've learnt a lot from the kitchen now. If I had to employ any of them to work with me, it would have to be Angela because of her consistency throughout the, the lunch. It's now back to MasterChef HQ to cook their own two-course meal. Now, this round is about your food. Ladies and gentlemen, 60 minutes, let's cook. In the pro kitchen, Tracy struggled to get her food out on time. Now she has just one hour to complete her two ambitious restaurant-inspired dishes. I'm doing roasted halibut on truffle mash with pea puree and sep sauce. For dessert, I'm doing a rhubarb and amaretto syllabub with amaretti biscuits. You seem very, very confident about these two dishes. Well, I've cooked them a few times and I really like them. You have to seriously impress us today, mm. which means that every single part of this has to be right for you to make it as our quarter-finalist. Mm. Are you going to be our quarter-finalist? Yes. Tracy's got loads of ingredients I like. You know, if you do take my favourite flavours and you mess them up, I'm going to be really disappointed. I might even be angry. Yesterday, Ashley showed technical flair with his beurre blanc sauce, but he undercooked his new potatoes. Can he turn out two mistake-free courses today? What are you doing for us, Ash? Um, the first course is going to be a scallop and mango curry with uh, masala mash. Are we going to go potato cook properly today? Absolutely, yes. And then do uh, what I call chocolate lava cake. You call it fondant. <laughs> you know 
that the road to the MasterChef final is littered with the corpses of failed field on Yes, I know, I've seen it. Scallop, mango, on mashed potato. I mean, that, that is fusion, but I'm, I'm not sure. You have three minutes. After scraping through the invention test, office temp Angela excelled in the pro kitchen. But will her experimental food combinations impress this time? What are we going to have? Uh, I've got dark chocolate wasabi sponge with white chocolate cream. Japanese mustard sponge. Yep. All right, you loony. And then what? <laughs> and uh, for my main, I'm doing fillet beef with polenta chips. Your heritage, your mother was West Indian. Yes. How does that affect your food? Cooking's a really important part of sort of West Indian life and everyone cooks, everyone gets around the table. I think because I've like travelled around a bit as well, I've sort of experimented with different flavours, so hopefully I'm going to show you that a bit in my food today. If you do go through, yep. how far can you go? I think I can go all the way. For all the contestants, it's Angela's food I most want to try. And it's actually Angela who I said was least likely to go through. One minute and counting. Time's up. Step away from the plate. Fusion cook Ashley has made scallops and mango curry with spinach and mash. And for dessert, a chocolate fondant with raspberry coulis. I think the flavours are very good. The texture... Mm. There's nothing firm in there at all. It quickly, very quickly, becomes quite sloppy. But yesterday, you gave us raw potato. Yeah. Today, you gave us perfectly made mashed potato. Good. Fantastic. I still don't believe that mango and potato go together. Mm. In actual fact, I think it's two dishes. I think the scallop and the mango curry, really nice idea as a starter. Mm. I think the potatoes and the spinach, maybe with something else completely different. Mm. Um, it's not my favourite thing I've eaten today. OK, fine. In with the chocolate pudding. Yeah. The heart goes out to you. I mean, it was a, lo it was a lovely idea, mm. and um, it's failed. Yeah, absolutely. Raspberry is very sharp. It would have been a perfect accompaniment, but that's just cocoa-y slop. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Because, actually, yesterday you showed some real skill. You made a bird blanc. Mm. You came in here very, very confident. Your confidence is now probably as far down as it can go. The tasting of the pudding, of course, yes, that was a bit of a write-off, really. I mean, what I tried was something pretty risky, and I, before it's been fine, so... <laughs> Experimental cook Angela has gambled on fillet beef and polenta chips, followed by chocolate wasabi sponge with raspberry and white chocolate cream. You do cook food with lots and lots of flavour. It tastes very, very good indeed. It looks a bit shambolic, but it tastes great. Thank you. This is the second time I've looked at one of your dishes and thought that's going to be a disaster, <laughs> and it's tasted nice. Your weakness is what? Presentation. You're right. Well, I'm fascinated by uh, chocolate cream raspberry wasabi. <laughs> I don't get any wasabi at all, but the whole thing is delightful. As it goes up to your mouth, you can really smell those fresh raspberries. The cake is really well made. It is a very good tasting dish. It just looks like it's been made by a three-year-old. <laughs> I'm so glad that they like my flavours and they just didn't think I was some fluke that got through. Fine dining fan Tracy has made roast halibut on a bed of mash and truffle oil, followed by rhubarb and amaretto syllabub and amaretto biscuits. I think those flavours are big, big, and I absolutely really love them. Very, very rich. Yeah. You know, it cost an arm and a leg to order it, but uh, I do like that truffle cum seb. The whole thing should be right royal, and at the moment it's a bit sloppy and a bit flabby, but I'm seriously impressed with the way you've cooked that piece of fish. Like, seriously impressed. I'm 
really annoyed that I forgot to butter the biscuits, so they all stuck to the paper. Love the flavour of the rhubarb, wonderful and sharp. Texture for me, again, is a bit sloppy. And I'm sad about your biscuits, because the idea of you making your own biscuits, good stuff. It's got amaretto booze in there, so it tastes like marzipan with a kick. Mm. There are touches of real style about your food, especially in your flavour combinations, which are unusual. You know, I, I love strong flavours. I guess that's my, my style. It's judging time. Off you go. Now our decision has to be which one of these becomes our quarter-finalist. Ashley did mess up royally today. I mean royally. That wasn't a fondant where it was a little bit too runny in the middle. That was one messed up fondant. I mean, the fondant has ceased to be. If, if the fondant works, then uh, it, it might be enough to clinch it. But, uh, you know, end of the day, I, I try my best. I mean, the fact is that one dish didn't actually even happen at all, and his scallop dish wasn't very tasty or that interesting. OK, Ashley goes. We now talk about Tracy versus Angela. Angela cooked good polenta chips with the tomatoes, red wine balsamic, um, sauce, I doubted it. Actually, the tanginess of it went really well with that polenta. Her dessert was very, very well made. It looked like it was put together by a three-year-old. Her food is all over the place. Decent flavours. You would look at it if it came up to you in a restaurant and thought, what on earth is going on? I just hope they forgive me for my presentation and I just hope that they put me through. That's all I can do, really, is just hope. Tracy is, uh, is tripping up and making little mistakes but she did cook that fish absolutely perfectly. And I love the combination of the seps and the truffle. I love the flavours of her amaretto and rhubarb syllabub. Her execution today is all over the place. I think she's trying to cook above her ability and above her knowledge. I had so many different dishes going on, so I just think I overstretched myself probably because I wanted to impress them. We have got a tough decision. It is for a quarter-final place. Who has the potential? Our quarter-finalist. The person going through. Is Angela. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm a good home cook, you know, so I, I think that's where I belong. <laughs> I think they probably saw some potential, but um, I think I made too many mistakes for them to put me through, really. <laughs> I'm so excited. I thought I was going home yesterday, and I can't believe I've got it through to the quarter-final. It's just got to break down all those issues with presentation and just try and get that little bit further. Just make it, make it to the end. Yeah, I'm so happy that I've got through to the quarter-final. Angela will be back for the quarter-final, where she'll face three other exceptional cooks.